So I cut my hair. That's the first thing I know you're thinking about. It's been six years. But have you ever wondered what your superpower is? What makes you unique? What are the things that we sometimes think are disadvantages but really can empower us and make us powerful? Have you ever thought about your weakness actually being your strength? I know we often talk about our weaknesses and whatever our opportunities, but sometimes we focus too much on our strengths and forget that some of the things that make us different can also be categorized as our strengths. What do you think? I don't know, let's talk about it. So today's quote is from Omar Johnson. Um, he's the former CEO um, of Beats by Dre and VP of Apple. If the room does not look like you, leverage it as a strength and go into that room and do what that room can't do. So off the top, without the context of what we got the quote right, right. but off the top, when you hear that quote as a standalone, first thoughts. So first thoughts when I heard that was it gave me access to what my superpower would be. And so it also gave you relevance to what you should do or should be doing in a room where you are the minority and or the anomaly, if you will, mm -hmm. right? And um, that's what it, that's where that's where it took for me. I say off the top for me, um, I will say it kind of burst my bubble in the sense that it challenged my perceived thoughts about always looking at it as a weakness. I never really ever thought about that um, as a strength of mine or that I could flip that to be a strength of mine. So I actually had a guy tell me, so just, just, just in case, it says, if the room does not look like you, mm -hmm. leverage it as a strength and go in that room and do what that room can't do. Yeah. A good home, a friend of mine said, he wanted to give a shout out to Kanye. Now, I'm gonna laugh, right? Right. You know, he, he at one point in time, I don't know the word, so excuse my French if children are watching, he shitted on Kanye, right? Mm -hmm. He said, you know, what Kanye was about was very, um, he didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. But when he heard this, he was like, ah, because Omar Johnson in the context of the video basically stated, I'm culture. I'm, I'm who you're trying to attract. I am what mainstream is uh, considering popular. And mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. And though I look different than everybody in this room, the vantage point is where I stand in that room. And another thing that I wanted to add to, and this this was a huge eye opener. So shout out to Annalise when we did the podcast last week. We were outside talking and you guys had asked me a question during the podcast, which you guys should check it out. Learning Unboxed on any media platform. You asked me a question about fashion and why we should be doing it, right? And my first response was, dude, I don't know fashion like that, Rob and Yogi shit. And before I could get it out, Rob and Yogi are like, well, Rob specifically <laughs> is like, mm -mm, mm -mm. now we're on the mic, so we can't, people can't see our faces, yeah. but you can see you adamantly like, mm -mm, answer the question, answer the question. And I'm like, well, I'm not fit to answer the question. Well, anyway, I'm going to speed it up. So we were... This is story time, by the way. We're debriefing. <laughs> we're debriefing, you know, debriefing about, you know, why you asked me that yeah. question? I'm not in that industry like that. Mm -hmm. And she said, you're the example of the kids that we're trying to attract. Yeah. And in that moment, man, I'm like, dude, I am the stereotype gone good, mm. if you will. Hot takes, the stereotype going good. I like that. So I thought that was pretty. So that that almost put me a, a, a certain identity on me that I felt like I can go in, a, in any room now with that experience mm -hmm. and help shape whatever I need to shape or create in a positive way. Okay. So you and get, I wasn't rambling. You, you mean it was story time? You know, he just didn't say <laughs> story time. You know what I'm saying? Oh, jazz hands. Oh. <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get better at watching the last video. I say, um, way too much. Okay. And I don't do it as not knowing what to say. It's kind of like my process of thinking. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to start to just pause rather than saying, um, because okay. I think I counted about 50,000 ohms and it really bothered me. <laughs> I digress. Live. Yeah. <laughs> Self-reflection. It's crazy. So based upon that story time, hindsight 2020. Read the quote back again. So keeping that story in mind, if the room does not look like you, leverage it as a strength. Go into that room and do what that room can't do. But before you go into the hindsight 2020, um, I kind of want to do a slight deviation. Yeah, so story time part two. When was the first the time first. that you could remember vividly being the only one in the room? Like the first, the first recollection. Around middle school, because I started taking the classes that you mm -hmm. know the algebras and mm -hmm. while well, the the main school went to you know general math. Gotcha. And so I had to start to take those not AP because it wasn't yeah. AP in middle school, but I was one of the people that got whooped yeah. if I didn't bring good grades yeah. home. So I brought good grades home, which then reflected in, hey, he's smart. Okay. Put him in these classes. So I want you to do the hindsight specific to the first time that you remember being the only one. So how would you use being the only one as a strength in your eighth grade algebra class? Oh, that would be that would be difficult. Be, but, uh, but that's the that, so we're challenging ourselves to right. be on. Well, because I think the reason why I do that, and I'm, I'm thinking about mine as well. So mine actually wasn't until college at NC State. Is I think you went to African American all black high school. I went to majority black high school. Oh yeah, I went to majority white majority school. black middle elementary, middle school, high school, primarily white college. Oh okay. So so mine true, and then I studied textiles. Okay. So okay. yeah. All right. Um. So. Dang it, um. Gotta get better. Oh, go ahead. I so thought you forgot. To no. So, I, I think it'll be easier easier for us if we did the hindsight as our current selves with the maturity and experience that we built. But if we do have people that can identify with our specific situations, when with the first time when we recognize being the only ones, I think it'll be really cool thinking about the quote in the context of that specific space of where you were and how you would have potentially flipped it because you wouldn't have had all of the other experiences that you've had to be the only one. Yeah, but what was, in eighth grade, the, and, I, and we might be prologuing the show, but in eighth grade, what's weird is I still was me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be in the class. I had to be in the class. Mm -hmm. So it was still like, well, I'm going to just do what I want to do since I'm in here. So I, I feel like I almost did better oh. then than when I became a professional and you know, let me change the way I dress. Let me change the way I present myself. Let me change the way I speak. Let me, uh, you know, clean up, if you will, be more digestible in, you know, in certain spaces. And I start to lose um, what made me me, if you will. So would you say yeah. the hindsight 2020 is because you hadn't experienced certain things, there was a certain confidence in yourself that you still led with? Right. Right now, I probably could have done more mm -hmm. to the degree of um, highlighting or changing biases mm -hmm. in the eighth grade. But I, man, I was so clueless yeah. to all of that. It was just simply, you know, we just in here. But I think that's a, I think there's a message in that because if you if you reflect on your eighth grade self and the confidence you had as a, being an individual versus you trying to apply that hindsight to your 26 year old self, right? It probably would have been trying to be more like you were in eighth grade. Yeah, twenty six. Are you saying I'm twenty six? I mean, that was nice. You know what I'm <laughs> but yeah, I mean, okay. But there's a lesson learned even in that. But we we, okay. we can go into some of that. So so mine was again graduated from Garrington High School, Charlotte, North Carolina, class of ninety nine, um, NC State. Very different, uh, like night and day as different as different could be. And then as I kind of alluded to, I was in textiles and specifically my textile chemistry classes. So textiles was already a major that wasn't popular at the time. Most, I don't want to speak for all black people, 
but I think a majority of black people didn't even know what the textile was. <laughs> um, so me being in those classes, and I wasn't in merchandising, I was in the chemistry and the engineering side, which means it was even a smaller group. And I was the only black male, for, I would say from, and it was it was 13 of us that were in kind of my, my track from 99 to 03 when I graduated. And I will say similar to you is I you I knew I recognized being the only black male. I don't know if I intentionally used it as a strength, but I will say I forged great relationship to the point where my classmates are still my friends to this day. And I think many of them will say, well, Rob today is the same Rob that he was. I still love sneakers. There's there's a funny story. Key and I were just starting to date. Uh, oh. And well, I was in a <laughs> so <laughs> I was in a, a fraternity in the textiles, mm -hmm. and we had a beach trip. And I went on the beach trip to be with my my peers. And my birthday happened to be doing the beach trip, mm -hmm. and we're celebrating. And I think we're having a good time. I'm actually on the phone with Kia. And one of my classmates, really good friend of mine, I'm not going to embarrass him, as they start to celebrate my birthday, they like shake a beer and like pour beer on me at the beach. And I guess, you know, from the other culture, that's it's a celebration. Well, I got my Jordans on. Mm. And you pouring beer while I got my J's on. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, I, like, it was a moment. Like, it was. It was it, but so, if there was a. There was, a, there was a moment to educate. <laughs> well, this probably isn't the right ensemble to be celebrating like that. Anyway. Right. Um, so similar to you, though, I would say I was able to use my culture, like me and the only black guy. Like, I didn't shy away from it. Um, I actually embraced it. And it allowed me, I remember going to their parties and, and just truly jump into the whole college experience and not being an outlier. Now, I will say I was able to do that because... I had my roommate and I had my foundation, pun intended, of my crew that allowed me to go all in in kind of the classroom because I had my community that I built at mm -hmm. NC State mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Yeah. So I think similar to you, I had the confidence of being myself and I didn't really think about it. It wasn't until I got to corporate America that That's when I started, I started to, to figure out that I, before I got to the stage that I'm at now where I felt like I had to like code switch and had to be what I needed to be to be deemed professional. Right, um, right. So, all right. I'm with you. So, we wrapping up? I think we wrap it up. And I forget the quote, but it was a dope quote. It's a dope quote by Mr. Omar. Omar Johnson. Omar Johnson. If the room does not look like you, I don't care who you are, mm -hmm. what your limitation may be, or what your opportunity may be, what you look like, what you sound like, uh, leverage it as a strength and go in that room and do what that room can't do. And so if you feel like you're in a position that you uh, have a seat at a table and you should not be here, that's more of the reason why you should be there mm -hmm. and a great opportunity to reflect your diverseness in that room so that they can hear your voice and make changes and adjustments accordingly. Yeah, use your diverseness. Diversity. <laughs> uh, appreciate y'all. Um. No. <laughs> Touche. Touche. All right. Thank you, y'all. <laughs>